tactile hypersensitivity and pediatric feeding difficulties. Hypersensitivity is the overreaction to a tactile stimuli, specific to tactile hypersensitivity. If a child is overreacting to a touch response, then you know for sure that this child is experiencing tactile hypersensitivity. Children with tactile hypersensitivities have difficulties in terms of even looking at certain food textures, smelling them, touching them, appreciating them, accepting them, tasting them, chewing them, and eating them. When children experience tactile hypersensitivity, it becomes hard for the caregiver to introduce a variety of food repertoire. It becomes hard for the caregiver to give the child adequate nutrition. And we all know the ill effects of lack of nutritious food in young children. So how can we help young children experiencing tactile hypersensitivity in feeding therapy? Firstly, understand what are the food textures that the child is aversive of. Take a list of these food items and work on them one by one. The goal in pediatric feeding intervention is not for the child to eat what we all eat, especially coming from the neurodiversity standpoint, our goal should be to give the child adequate nutrition that is essential for their growth. So understanding this should be your foundation in pediatric feeding and it's not just to keep expanding the child's feeding repertoire or food repertoire just because it's convenient for the caregiver. It is important for us to also consider the caregiver's convenience, but that is not our priority. Our priority is the child, what the child is experiencing. For example, an autistic child might have tactile hypersensitivities, and that's how he's wired. You could definitely help a child with in introducing different food textures and helping the child outgrow certain hypersensitivities or neutralizing the sensitivities to a certain degree or to a larger degree as well. However, our goal again is the nutrition and it is not about normalizing the child and normalizing the child's food repertoire. With this in mind, you get a list of food items that the child is comfortable eating, list of food items that the family eats but the child does not prefer eating. And from here, you try and understand, are these crispy textures? Are they soft textures? Is it a mixed texture that the child is concerned or worried about or the child is aversive about? If the child, for example, is able to accept crispy textures, a majority of our autistic children do accept crispy textures. And if your child or the child that you're working with in your sessions is accepting crispy textures, then you can start your grading from crisps. Start with, with, with whichever crisp your child likes and then grade it to the next, to the next, to the next texture. For example, you want to help the child come to a point of eating soft foods like idli or soft foods like dosa or appam, which is typical in South India. Then you start by introducing the crisp that the child likes. Move on to say fries, potato fries, like the French fries you get. And then from there, you grade it to the next texture, probably breadsticks or get bread, slice them in finger sizes and deep toast them with butter on both the sides. They become crispy, similar to the texture of the potato fries that you give your child. And then you gradually grate the toasting to a point that you move to softer, typical food textures. And from there, you grate it to idli or to dosa. So this is how we grade food texture in therapy. I've given you an example of grading from crispy food textures to soft textures. Similarly, if you want to grade from soft textures to crispy textures, you just have to do vice versa. I hope this video has helped you. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more informative content on autism and pediatric feeding therapy.